Hey, it's a Humble Collector here, and in today's video, we have a really great unboxing. We've got uh, Battlefield Relic, we got Death Cards, and we actually have a really, really cool piece of uh, art, POW art. Uh, all of it's World War II, so I'm very excited to share it with you guys. Uh, without further ado, uh, we'll get started here. Uh, this is the Death Cards. Uh, I've been on a bit of a kick lately because of a project I've been working on, which I will probably reveal eventually. That's going to be a while. Um, so because of that, I bought... I think 50 death cards in the past week. You know, mostly at like wholesale kind of price. So I think it averages out to like three or four dollars a card. Um, so nothing too crazy. Ah, there we go. So a good mix of uh, units and awards and things on these. Looks like some of them are actually translated, which I'd forgotten about. Um, let's see. So we got George Smith, Panzer Regiment, uh, Franz. Uh, something Woodbiller, uh, Pioneer Battalion, Johann Wimmer, Grandier Regiment, uh, Franz Steiner here, who's also an infantry regiment, uh, Josef Hertreiter, infantry regiment, uh, Josef Hofinger. Who doesn't actually say? It's killed April 15th, 1945. Uh, Franz Priller, Gefreiter in a uh, Gebersjäger regiment. Josef Santer, uh, who was a medic, Santa Tots over Gefreiter in infantry regiment. Uh, Michael Winsler, uh, Gefreiter in infantry regiment, uh, veteran campaigns in Russia in the West. We have Krieger, Xavier Hoffender, uh, Gefreiter and Infantry Regiment, bearer of the Iron Cross Second Class and the Silver Moon Badge, uh, Edward Mittermeier, Obergefreiter and a Gebersjäger Regiment, and it looks like he also was a bearer of the Wound Badge, uh, Ludwig Eigner, Obergefreiter, Infantry Regiment, uh, bearer of the Iron Cross Second Class and the uh, Eastern Front Medal, Johann Thalhammer, uh, Obergefreiter and Infantry Regiment, bearer of the Iron Cross Second Class, and a veteran of the campaigns in Poland and the West. Josef Schirmer, Unter Officer in a uh, what mechanized Infantry Regiment, Motor Motor Sierten. yeah, Infantry Regiment, uh, bearer of the Iron Cross Second Class and the Tapserkites Medal. Oh, it's Tapserkites. I'll just translate that later. Um, got Theo. Sepp here, Hubbard Fighter in a uh, medical battalion, veteran of the campaigns in France and Russia, and bearer of the Asignungen. Can't, don't know what that word is, I'll translate it later. Luther Officer Martin Sirk, uh, Grenadier Regiment, uh, bearer of the Wound Badge in Silver and the Ost Front Medal. Uh, so interestingly enough, I um, didn't know this until recently when I was translating these cards, but apparently... All Grenadier regiments are infantry regiments, and apparently, like, in 1942, I think, is like a morale thing. They renamed all the infantry regiments Grenadiers, because Grenadier has a longer and more, um, I, I don't know, more, oh, that's the word I'm looking for. Basically, Grenadier regiments historically have been more like elite unit kind of thing, so it's like a uh, morale booster. They renamed all their infantry regiments Grenadier regiments, um, which I thought was kind of interesting. Uh, Johan Auer, uh, soldier in a Grenadier regiment. Uh, bearer of the Wound Badge, Johann Freidel, uh, Gefreiter and Grandier Regiment, Bearer of the Iron Cross Second Class, the Wound Badge, and I believe, yes, so that would be the Close Combat Clasp, uh, which is a uh, pretty interesting award, and I've been looking for a card with one on there for a while. Uh, Johann Prem, Gefreiter and a Pioneer Battalion, Bearer of the Iron Cross Second Class, the Infantry Assault Badge, and the Wound Badge. Franz Huber, Obergefreiter in a Bau, Ausbau Battalion. Can't remember what that is off the top of my head. Uh, Ost Metal. Hey, Anton Gruber here with a very nice photo of an EK-2. That's pretty neat. Obergefreiter in a Grandier Regiment. Bear of the Iron Cross Second Class. The uh, Close Combat Class, again. Uh, the Infantry Assault Badge and the Wound Badge and the Ost Eastern Front Medal. So interestingly, this photo must have been taken before he was awarded the Close Combat Class, because I think that's what the knock on smash is, I think. If I'm wrong, you'll correct me down below, but I'm pretty sure that's what that translates as. 
uh, Franz Ruckelbauer, uh, Ultra Officer and Infantry Regiment, Bearer of the Iron Cross Second Class, Infantry Assault Badge, East Front Medal, and the Silver Wound Badge. A lot of Silver Wound Badges in this lot, actually. Uh, Josef Bruckel, Oberkfighter in an Artillery Regiment, uh, Bearer of the Iron Cross Second Class, and then Willy uh, Seinbach. Yeah, so my camera just randomly decided to stop recording for some reason, so we're going to keep going. Uh, but yeah, Willie is a Feld level in infantry regiment. And what, Aloy Bruckbauer here is over a fighter in a grenadier regiment and bearer of the uh, War Merit Cross second class with swords and the Eastern Front Medal. And then we have Ludwig uh, Reitinger here, who is. Uh, Stabskefreiter in a Grenadier Regiment, Bear the Iron Cross Second Class, uh, the War Merit Cross, the Eastern Front Medal, the Crim Shield, and the Wound Badge. Yeah, apparently that was the one that was translated there, so that's pretty interesting. Um, one of the more interesting cards I have coming in that's not in yet is actually for a monk, uh, believe it or not. Um, I was quite surprised. I went to a, uh, a Catholic college that was run by Benedictine monks. Um, so imagine my surprise when I found a... Uh, a death card that had OSB on it, Order of St. Benedict. Um, pretty interesting. And actually, interestingly enough, I found out um, from a monk I used to know there that one of the monks at that monastery was actually in the German military during World War II. He, he long dead by the time I was there. But he had um, essentially been drafted. He'd served on the Eastern Front and ended up being captured on the Western Front. Uh, was sent here to the U.S. And when he got out of the POW camp, didn't want to go back to Germany. I found out that there was this uh, order of Benedictine monks here where I live um, that originally came from Germany, and a lot of them spoke German, and he ended up just staying here, apparently, which is kind of kind of neat. Uh, but yeah, really good cards. Looking forward to doing translations on those. Um, this, is a, this is a fun package. So you notice it says inert, so we got some ordinance here. And I have to imagine that if somebody at the post office scanned this, they must have had a small heart attack um, before they saw that sticker. Because obviously the sticker wouldn't lie. Um, maybe it's a legal requirement. I don't even know. But, uh, yeah, really nice piece of Battlefield Dug ordinance here. And one I was got for surprisingly cheap off of uh, Gunbroker, which I haven't really bought a lot off of lately. But every now and then you find good stuff on that. Right, here we go. Set that down there. Don't think there's anything else in this box, or at least there shouldn't be. Got the guy's business card. Good. Put that in my pile with all the other ones I have. And yeah, we'll open this, uh, this up. It's a little smaller than I thought it was. That didn't really cut anything, did it? No, it did. So what you see here is what is left of a uh, Soviet mortar shell. I can't remember if it's an 81 or an 82 millimeter. Yes, yeah, so my camera keeps dying on me, or not dying, but it keeps like switching settings and stopping recording. Which again, I've been saying for a long time now I need to get a new camera, but that just means I really need to get a new camera. Uh, but yeah, pretty neat. Unfortunately, don't know where it was dug up at. Um, but yeah, it's got the nice crack down the middle there. Fuse is missing. It's pretty interesting. All things considered. I don't have a lot of Soviet stuff. I wish I had more, but it's hard getting um, Soviet stuff here in the U.S., at least World War II Soviet stuff. Um, but yeah, it's a pretty, pretty neat piece. Set that aside here. And then that brings us to the big package here. Uh, Do Not Bend. Like I said, this is a really, really stunning piece. Um, so the guy I bought this from, somebody I bought a lot of photos from over the past year, um, this stuff's been featured on the channel many, many times, and he's in the process of moving right now, and as a result of that, he's been selling some stuff off to cover costs, and he told me, you know, I really don't want to sell this, um, <laughs> you know, this is a piece I actually really like, but, uh, you know, you gotta pay your bills sometimes, and in this case, moving was just more expensive than he'd imagined, 
And so he sold this to me on the stipulation if I ever sell it, that I give him first dibs. Um, which, of course, I will honor that. Uh, he's become quite a, quite a good friend, actually, over the past year. Um, keep going here. Now, granted, I really haven't sold anything, so it might be a while <laughs> before the opportunity for him to buy it back comes up. But if you were to ask me, I'd gladly sell it back to him. I mean, we've had a pretty, pretty good relationship over the past year. Which is nice. That's a nice thing about this hobby, getting to know people and kind of... You know, building these relationships because in the military, you know, it's all based off trust. You know, you're trying to make sure that everything that you're buying or selling is authentic, and uh, you know, having that uh, that good relationship with dealers and with collectors and things is a really fun part of the hobby. Alrighty, so here we are. So I guess first things first, before we get to the POW art here, we'll start with the photos, kind of build up to the. Uh, POW art on that piece of wood, actually, and is bigger than I thought, which is funny, because, again, he gave me dimensions for it, uh, and much like the mortar, I just apparently am not very good at eyeballing things or thinking about uh, dimensions, apparently. Okay. Yeah. okay well, that's enough for us to at least get the photos out. So these are pretty cool. These two... Uh, photos. Uh, they're not marked, but they appear to be like official, like press photo size photos from the Inter Allied Games uh, that took place at the end of World War One. So, you know, basically before everybody went home in 1919, you know, while they were all kind of sitting around with not a whole lot to do, they ended up having these games that were kind of like the Olympics, which is pretty neat. Um, you can find some pretty good info on it online if you do some digging. And, uh, yes, yeah, so we'll move on here. Carefully take this wrap off. There we go. Let's try the trip well, which is nice. I remember one back home with all the POW names there. But yeah, so this is a piece of art called The Prince of the Pauper. And I'm going to pull up the little blurb that he had sent me um, just so I don't miss anything important. Uh, but essentially, uh, this is a Bill Maudlin cartoon, um, and it's actually painted on wood, as you can see, uh, by one of the POWs listed on the reverse. Uh, the insignia up here at the top, um, if I pick up my tripod here, is for the uh, 88th Infantry Division. And they were in Italy uh, during the war, which is pretty neat. Um, but yes, yeah, so this was actually, you know, Rather famous cartoon that then one of the POWs had painted for uh, one of the guards there. Or is that, is that Shamrock the 88th? I can't remember. Um, anyway, but on the back, uh, remember once back home, uh, Hans Schroeder, Franz Grotz, Rolf Mandel, Heinz Meyer, Max uh, Senftleben, Senft uh, Hans Radowski, and last but not least, Octavio Delpin and Mario Mucha. Trieste, Italy, January through May, 1946. Uh, so it looks like Franz here, his nickname was Shorty, Rolf's was Tiny, and Hans Rudowski was an electrician, I guess. Um, pretty neat. And I'm not sure if Octavio and Mario were like Italian POWs at the same camp, or uh, what's going on there. But yeah, really just a stunning, fascinating piece. Um, I really don't have any POW art in my collection. I have some trench art, but not anything like this. And just beautifully done, too. Like, spectacular work, whoever did this. Um, so, yeah, it'll be displayed in my collection with pride, uh, for sure. Uh, but, yeah, so overall, really awesome uh, group this time between uh, the POW art we have here. I'm going to move it out of the way so it doesn't get hurt. Um, you know, photos of the Inter-Allied Games, a very nice Soviet mortar shell, Battlefield Dug, and a whole bunch of death cards that will probably take me many, many weeks to translate and research. Uh, so yeah, I hope you all enjoyed the video. Uh, please leave a comment down below. Love hearing from you guys. Uh, thank you all for watching. Happy collecting. And I'll see you all again very soon.